Hi, I'm Allison, and today I'm going to show you how to add activity completion into your Moodle site. This video was filmed in October of 2014, so depending on when you're accessing the video and what version of Moodle you're using, your site may look a little different from what you're seeing here, but the basic functions and principles should still hold. So this is a slick little feature in Moodle that lets you add checkboxes into your Moodle site. And these checkboxes basically just help participants keep track of which activities they've completed and which they still have left to do in your site. And once you've got this successfully set up, your Moodle site will function more like a to-do list that your learners can work their way through and give them a nice visual representation of the progress in the course. So these checkboxes will show up next to each activity where you define checkboxes to show up. So why would I do this, you might ask? Well, one, people just love checkboxes. Um, but there are discussions coming out of online learning and research uh, in the field of gamification that suggest that this kind of progress tracking can be a huge help and even a motivator to um, participants in an online learning environment. So it's just a generally good idea to do if you can set it up in your site. To add activity completion, you're first going to need to set it up on the general site level, and then you'll need to add um, custom kind of options to each activity where you want the checkboxes to show up. So first, go into your edit settings on your site, and head kind of down to the bottom of your course settings, and you'll see this option called completion tracking, and by default it will be turned off in your site. Go ahead and choose yes to enable completion tracking. All right, now I'm going to save these changes. And once you've enabled completion tracking at the site level like that, Moodle will now give you some extra options within each of your activities and resources um, that allow you to decide on an activity by activity basis whether you want Moodle to display a checkbox next to that activity and how you want Moodle to kind of count and track participants' completion. So this is going to now um, exist on the activity level and you get some additional settings. So let's take a look at a few different activities and the type of activity completion settings you can tweak. At this point, um, as usual, you're going to need to turn editing on in your course. And once editing is turned on, uh, you can go into each individual activity settings. So let's say, for example, we wanted to require participants to uh, participate in this Introduce Yourself forum. So we have a forum in the middle um, at the beginning of the site, and they just need to introduce themselves and explain why they're interested in this, this site. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit the settings here. And let's say for this site, we want all participants to um, submit a discussion. You'll notice if I go to the very bottom, I now get these additional activity completion options. And that's what happened when we toggled that on at the site level. And right now it's saying do not indicate activity completion. So nobody really will see anything whether or not they complete this form. We're going to turn this uh, to show activity as complete when conditions are met. And we can define the conditions that we want for this activity. So we said we want students to post a discussion, at least one discussion or reply in this forum to introduce themselves. So let's go ahead and click Require Post. And we can go ahead and say one, because we just need them to introduce themselves once. Um, and we're set. So that way, uh, if I go ahead and save and return to the course, this forum will now be required and students need to post one discussion introducing themselves into this forum. And the way that you'll notice that this is enabled is you'll see a new checkbox here indicating that we've turned on activity completion. And this checkbox has a dotted line around it indicating that um, this isn't a manual completion, so students don't get to sort of willy-nilly choose whether or not they want to check it off. There are some conditions set that we set, again, posting one discussion, and this will only become checked when the student actually completes that. And I'll show you what that looks, from the looks like from the student level after we've gone through a couple of examples here. All right, so that's a forum discussion. Let's go ahead and say, um, let's say we want students to view a document here. So I've got a sample PDF document. I'm going to the settings for that. And again, at the bottom of the page of this PDF document we have uploaded, is the activity completion settings. Right now, it's not indicating any completion, but let's say we want to require students to just look at the document. Um, we're going to go ahead and say, show activity as complete when conditions are met. And you'll see for a document, or this also applies to a website or a page, the only condition that we can set 
as an instructor is that students must view this activity com to complete it. We don't have things as granular as, you know, they need to look at it for 10 minutes or anything. Moodle is not quite smart enough for that, but we will know if they clicked on it and viewed it. And that's, that's what this is saying. Just require them to click on it and view the document. All right, save and return to course, and we should see that checkbox pop up. There it is. All right, students need to view it. Let's say, for example, we wanted students to keep track themselves of whether you know, they think they've completed it. So we want them to review the document, but they get to decide when it's completed. You know, maybe they need to look at it three times before they feel like they can check off the checkbox. We can do that and let students manually mark when they are finished with that activity. Let's do that for this next one. So we'll say they can look at the extension website here. There's a little plug for the extension website. Um, and we'll change the activity completion settings. And for this one, we'll go ahead and say students can manually mark the activity as completed. And then they get to peruse it as long as they need to, and they will need to check the box themselves. It will not automatically fill in a check. They get to decide when they think they're done. Save and turn to course. And you'll see the checkbox popped up. And this time, instead of a dotted line around it, it has a solid line. And that indicates manual activity completion for the students. So you might want to make um, your participants aware of that in the course, this distinction between the two if you're using it. You could set some things. You could just set everything in your course to be manually marked. You could set you know, kind of a combination of the two. But just make them aware of that distinction. One final setting I'll show you is for a quiz. If you happen to have a quiz, or examine your site and you want to indicate completion on that. Let's open that and go to the bottom, settings for activity completion. And you'll notice the options that we have here. We'll go ahead and show activity as complete with conditions. Um, you can either require participants just to view a quiz, or you can actually require a grade. And this is kind of a, a good one to check. You can't require a specific grade. So you can't say, oh, they need to make at least 90% to complete this. Um, you, just any grade that they receive will count as this being complete and will give them a checkbox on that activity. Um, so that's kind of the only granular level you have for this. Um, Let's go back and return the course. And now you'll see that we have checkboxes and activity completion set up for select activities in the course. Don't feel like you need to require everything in the course uh, to have these checkboxes next to it. Really put the checkboxes next to the things that are kind of big progress items that participants really should keep track of. All right, now that I have this set up, let's go ahead and look at this from the student perspective. So here I am logged in with my student account. You'll notice my profile picture is a little different. And I'm going to refresh it, and we can see the changes that we just made here. OK, so from the student perspective, they are going to see these checkboxes going, oh, all right, I'm going to need to do something here. I'm going to need to do something here. And I'm going to need to do something here. They could look at the website, for example. And this was a manual completion, so I'm just going to check this myself. That's what manual completion means. A student can check things off when they're ready. This is a view requirement. We required them to view it. So I'll have a look at this. And Moodle should track that I looked at it. The one thing you're noticing, though, is this doesn't automatically pop up um, just because I opened this in a new tab. Um, your participants are going to have to refresh the page, and then we should track that view. But there it is. All right, I've opened it up, viewed it, and Moodle's tracking that as complete. So that's basically both sides of the completion tracking from the instructor side, and you can see kind of what it looks like for students. Great thing to consider including in your course. Thanks for listening, and happy Moodling.